Good morning, Algebra. Let's do more with graphing parabolas today, okay? Um, so I've got a step-by-step -step method for graphing parabolas that I think is, um, that just takes a look at a lot more of the equation than just plugging in a table of values. And it's, it's a lot, it gets much more specific and it gets to where that parabola lies on the graph more quickly than just randomly plugging in a table of values. I mean, what if, what if a parabola doesn't come close to, you know, where x equals zero, except way, way high up and you start plugging it in and you get 100, right? I mean, you can't really figure, it'd be hard to sort of figure out where that um, parabola goes on a graph without some other methods than just plugging in random values that you choose. So let's take a look at this. I've given you an example. In fact, it is the first example on the page of problems that are included with today's assignment. So if you haven't looked at that yet, then pause this video, get it out, and follow along on the paper um, if you don't want to follow along here on the video, okay? So I'll hold, hold just for a second for that. Pause. Okay, we're back. So I've given you y equals x squared minus 2x minus 3. All right, so we've got the y equals, which means we can put it on a coordinate plane. I've got my coordinate plane right here. We're going to start, and, and uh, on the examples that I've given you, it's, it goes through this A, B, C, D, all right? It goes, maybe even E, it goes step by step, and I would encourage you to, on the four problems that I gave you to do, that you go step by step and follow the exact same order and same um, process, okay? None of it's hard, it's just step by step. So we're gonna find the x-intercepts first, Remember, the x-intercepts are where y equals 0. So I flipped the equation and stuck in a 0 here. Okay, So I flipped the equation so that the 0 would be on the other side, on the right, because that's where I like it. And then I said, well, let's see if we can factor this. And indeed, I factored it. x squared minus 2x minus 3 factors to x minus 3 and x plus 1. Therefore, x equals 3 and negative 1. So let's see. If I plug that in here, then I've got x equals 1, 2, 3, a point right here on the x-axis. These are the x-intercepts where the graph intercepts the x-axis, okay? And negative 1. Excellent. Okay. We can see that the y-intercept on any equation is where x equals 0. So any term where there's an x like this, and it's not just plus x or minus x, but like an x times something, if you plug in 0, it disappears, right? So I can actually cover these up, any term with, a, with the x if I'm plugging in 0, and see that c, right? If this is a squared minus b or plus bx plus c, c here equals negative 3, and so the y-intercept is always c. It's always that constant or the plain old number at the end of the equation. So here it's negative 3, so let's put that on here. 1, 2, 3. Okay. So now, I, one thing I haven't said yet is that if x squared is positive, then the, then the parabola is going to open up. And if x squared is negative, the parabola is going to open down. Okay, I've only given you positive ones on the examples today to do, um, but that's just something to know. So if you ever see a y equals negative x squared, you can see that that opens down. There are the examples from yesterday, I think, give one of those maybe. So we're at C now. Now we're looking for the axis of symmetry. I'm going to get out my red marker here. So the axis of symmetry is where x equals negative b over 2a. X, and this is in this equation where y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So we're looking at y equals negative b, so I plugged in negative, negative 2, over 2a. a here is this invisible 1, so over 2 times 1. So if I 
negative negative 2 is positive 2 over 2. And so that should equal positive 1. And I have negative 1 here, which is wrong. So I found my mistake. Good. So this equals negative 1. And that matches up with my graph, which comes down here. So this is the equation. Remember we did that vertical line thing with an equation, x equals. So an x equals equation is a vertical line. So this is x equals positive 1. And so I make my axis of symmetry. That means that every point on the left of this line has a partner point to the right of that line. Okay? So let's see. I'm going to give I'm going to go ahead and give my y intercept its partner point right there. Okay? So there's a partner point on the x axis. The y intercept has a partner point. And then let's see. Um, I've got this vertex. So the vertex is oh, and I plugged this in wrong because I plugged in a negative 1. Let's see what I'm doing here. I'm making mistakes. Let's plug in 1. Still, it should be negative 4. Goodness, I'm good at making mistakes. Do we all know this, though? So 1 minus 2 times 1 minus 3. And it works because that negative 1 squared made it positive 1. So, so, and, so let's see. So I plug in 1, and I get x 1 squared is 1, minus 2 is negative 1, minus 3 is negative 4, and so it is negative 4. Um, so I'm going to plug that in right there, okay? And so let's see. There you go. You can see a parabola. So we are following the same set of steps every time, right? Kept the x-intercepts. Let's plot the y-intercept. You're going to get the x-intercepts by factoring. Plot the y-intercept, plot the axis of symmetry, plot the vertex. Give the axis of symmetry a partner point, okay? So this is the same steps every time. Please give it a try. Um, I modeled making mistakes today and then not even being able to find my mistakes. Remember, this is all part of the deal, and I hope you all have a great day.